we just heard an extremely insightful talk on Fethullah Gole, his movement. It's unfortunate that uh, Fethullah Gule is an unfamiliar name to many Indians. Even though I regard uh, you know, him as one of the most uh, transformative personalities in the world today, what I am going to do, Professor, is uh, I certainly am not a scholar like you on Fethullah Gulay, but uh, he has he has been a source of uh, interest, inspiration, enlighten, enlightenment for me for some years. So I'm going to share some of my uh, reflections which uh, have been greatly strengthened by what you said just now. You know, a recent interview that uh, Fethullah Gulay gave to the New York Times New York Times says that uh, Fethullah Gule is a name that was discovered by the world media only recently. Now, in all modesty, I would say that uh, I personally discovered Fethullah Gule nine years ago. You know, I had written an article on him in the Times of India an Islamic voice of reason and reform in America. I say America because Fethullah Gulay has been living in America for many years now. And I rediscovered Fethullah Gulay when I visited Turkey a couple of months back. And uh, friends of uh, Mr. Bilal in Turkey were so kind that they organized my talks at three different places, two of them very prestigious universities, and the subject of my talks was Mahatma Gandhi. In particular, my book on Mahatma Gandhi. And friends, I was uh, really not expecting the kind of uh, interest that the audiences, the listeners showed in my book, or rather in the personality of Mahatma Gandhi, University of Istanbul, University, Marmara University, a, a trade and business platform. And it really opened my eyes to what a rich, an open society Turkey is. And also I could find friends that uh, followers of Fethullah Gulay are nearly everywhere. And as Professor Alam pointed out, this influence is not political influence. It is sustained sustained activity below the radar in society, in civil society, in education that is slow tr social transformation that uh, Fethullah Gulay and his followers have been bringing about in Turkey for years together and it has brought about a very interesting transformation in Turkish society. As some of you know, Turkey has gone through some very uh, big ups and downs in history. The Ottoman Empire disintegrated, came to an end after World War I. And in reaction to that, again as Professor Alam pointed out, there was a, a so-called secular response to that, which tried to completely suppress religion from public life. 
so much so that there is in the in the interview I read Fethullah Gule when he was six year old he was attending school and in the recess he says that I prayed and the principal of the school punished me by locking me up for one full day why because students are not supposed to pray there should be no Islam in public space this is you know if we can say this is secular fundamentalism hmm? you know a lot of people give credit to Mustafa Kemal of course Mustafa Kemal is uh, the architect of modern Turkey but what happened during those decades of completely banishing Islam and religion from public life in a society where 98% are Muslims it is it went against the grain of Turkish society and what Fethullah Gule has been doing is bringing religion back but religion in its true sense not the identity kind of religion but the true ethical core of Islam is being revived in Turkey and therefore it presents a very uh, positive model to Islamic countries in the world and also to India because you know he is so unfamiliar even among Muslims in fact you know Turkey it's unfortunate that Turkey is so far away from the Indian consciousness it should not be you know Turkey is a is a is a country of uh, such vibrancy you know as professor Alam was saying when we were together it's a it's a highly developed nation it's more prosperous than several European countries even materially and today it is presenting a Muslim country which is presenting a different example a different model to the Islamic world and to the world at large friends I would like to uh, just compliment whatever professor said by quoting Pro Fethullah Gule on certain aspects which are highly relevant to India and I'll take up only four points one he is a very strong voice of condemnation of terrorism terrorism in the name of religion just last month the observer research foundation and uh, i'm very happy that we have uh, our dear friend and brother rafiq bhai here and his colleagues from minhajul quran minhajul quran and the observer research foundation together organized a major interfaith conference with an address from Dr. Muhammad Tahirul Qadri from Canada. Again, a very, you know, he, I would, reg I regard Fethullah Gule on the one hand and Dr. Tahirul Qadri, a Pakistani Islamic scholar. These are two very important influential voices of change, positive change in the Islamic world and the world at large. His doctor, to those of you who do not know, we released this fatwa by Dr. Kadri, a fatwa on terrorism. And those of you who are interested may pick up copies here. And also one more book on jihad, the true meaning of jihad, not jihad as is being misinterpreted, misprojected. So Fethullah Gule says, and this is after the terrorist attacks on America. He says, Osama bin Laden has sullied the bright face of Islam. This, the reparation for the damage he has caused requires years of work. Substituting the Islamic cause for his own cravings, bin Laden is committing monstrous acts. This is Fethullah Gule. He also says, there is no place for terror in true Islam because Islam considers the murder of an in individual 
equal to disbelief. Religion does not allow killing to achieve goals. Heaven cannot be attained by killing innocent people. An innocent person cannot be harmed even during times of war. This is the true teaching of Islam. Friends, as Professor pointed out, the other major point of relevance of Fethullah Gulay's movement is in the area of interfaith dialogue. The, the way in which he has been reaching out to peoples of other faiths, accepting as they are, respecting them, I think this is the way to go forward. He says, Religion is a road that brings everyone together in brotherhood. Regardless of how their adherents implement their faith in their daily lives, generally accepted values of love, respect, tolerance, forgiveness, compassion, human rights, peace, brotherhood and freedom are all exalted by religion. All religions, not just one religion. Most of these values, he says, are accorded the highest precedence in the messages brought by Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, as well as in the messages of the Buddha and even Zarathustra, Lao Tzu, Confucius and Hindu prophets. As a Muslim, he says, as a Muslim, I accept all prophets and all books sent to different peoples throughout history and regard belief in them as an essential principle of being Muslim. You know, how enlightened these thoughts are. So all, all of us who believe in interfaith dialogue, interfaith harmony, need to study Fethullah Gulay movement and its inspirer, Fethullah Gulay. Friends, in the, in the, in the context of education, I found something uh, truly fundamental in his understanding. Again, just to complement what Professor said, he says that just as the Holy Quran is a manifestation of God's word, just as Holy Quran is a manifestation of God's word, the universe is a manifestation of God's power. We must study the commands of this universal book. So interesting. There is a book and there is a universal book. The universe is also a book. Hmm? He says we must study the commands of this universal book along with the Quran. Keeping the balance of keeping the balance being conscious of substance as much as form, the spiritual as well as the material, the hereafter as much as the word, as the word, the metaphysical as much as the physical. So here is a beautiful combination of education that is spiritual, that guides life, that guides society that is in the Holy Quran, but also education, study of the universal book, the, the world created by God. And it's a beautiful combination, friends. And this is true education, not the kind of education that has evolved in recent centuries in the West and which we are blindly copying. So, again, highly relevant for India. There are one more important thing and he says about women's empowerment because there is a lot of misconception that Islam relegates Muslim, you know, women to a, a lower status, which is just not true. There is a question asked of him, according to Muslim Islamic tradition, is the role of women limited to motherhood? Fethullah Gulay answers, it is not. The noble position of motherhood aside, our general opinion about women is that while taking into account the specific needs, it should be made possible for them to take on, take on every role, including the jobs of a physician, military officer, judge, president of a country. 
As a matter of fact, in every aspect of life throughout history, Muslim women have made contribution to their societies. In the golden age, and here he refers to the years during the life of Prophet Muhammad, in the golden years, starting with Aisha and others, they had their places among jurists and they taught men. And this is the golden age, he says, that needs to be brought back. And it can be only possible by empowering women, empowering women through education and giving them the right status in society. So friends, there are so many ways in which we need to see the example of Fethullah Gulay, understand its relevance for India, both for Muslims as well as non-Muslims. And today's program is, uh, is an effort on the part of the Observer Research Foundation and In Dialogue Foundation to introduce to the Indian intellectuals, people like you, a great personality of our times, Fethullah Gulay. And I do hope that uh, we will be able to further spread understanding of Fethullah Gulay and his Hikmat movement. And through that also, better, closer cooperation between India and Turkey. I said all this just to compliment uh, what you said, Professor, in your absolutely remarkable uh, address. Now, I invite you all to participate in, uh, in a discussion. Please uh, Identify yourselves and ask questions of uh, Professor Anwar Alam.